Uh, my name is Mohan Das. I am a medical physicist at uh, Fox Chase Cancer Center in Philadelphia, working in diagnostic imaging. Uh, I want to talk about the present concerns about the low dose radiation and uh, what the society has been doing regarding the low dose radiation. Uh, and I want to suggest we need to change our direction in order to benefit our human health. I'm going to basically talk about three different aspects about the low dose radiation effects. Uh, first one is the effect of the recent update on the atomic bomb survivor cancer mortality data that has been published recently. The second item I want to discuss is the uh, disastrous co uh, consequence of using the LNT model based advice in Fukushima following the nuclear reactor accidents there. Uh, the third, third topic I want to discuss is the uh, commonality of DNA damage that exists in our everyday activities and therefore uh, show you that the concerns about the DNA damage from low dose radiation is not really justified because uh, the concerns have arisen because of not including the response of our body uh, to such DNA damage, which can have a beneficial effect. Okay, so let me start, start talking about the recent atomic bomb survivor cancer mortality data. Uh, the atomic bomb survivor cancer mortality data has played a major role in our understanding of the effects of low dose radiation and uh, uh, these data have been used by international committees and national committees for example the br7 committee uh, to rule out the possibility of beneficial effects of low dose radiation and to uh, claim that there is no threshold for the carcinogenic effect of low dose radiation uh, now these data have also, have also been used by scientists to claim that there is increased risk of cancer from, for example, CT scans from low dose radiation. Uh, recently, the, uh, there has been an update to the atomic bomb survivor cancer mortality data uh, that's been published about a year ago in uh, March of uh, 2012. This data is qualitatively different from the previous updates to the data in that it clearly shows a reduction of cancer rates for the dose range of 0.3 to 0.7 gray, which is not explainable using the linear no threshold model. The authors of the paper said there is no explanation for this reduction in the cancer rates in that dose range. Uh, the authors also claimed that the data indicates there is no threshold for the carcinogenic effect of radiation. Uh, however, if you look at the functional forms they used, they are very restrictive functional forms of the linear type or linear plus quadratic type, which have led them to that conclusion that the threshold is zero. If you use a more general functional form, then the conclusion from the analyzing the data would be that the presence of a threshold cannot be excluded. Uh, when I, okay, uh, so, so, so effectively the atomic bomb survivor cancer mortality data does not justify the use of the linear no threshold model that has led to uh, many different uh, problems in terms of uh, harming the public's health and also in preventing improvement um, of public health. So now let me go on to the second part of the uh, second topic. Uh, the use of the linear no threshold model and the use of that for providing advice to the public and to the governments on dealing with nuclear emergencies, that has had a disastrous effect on public health uh, as seen in Chernobyl and in Fukushima following the reactor accidents there, nuclear reactor accidents there. Uh, 
the linear uh, LNT model based evacuation of urgent evacuation of the residents of uh, hospitals in Fukushima led to more or less immediate deaths to the hospital uh, patients because of the evacuation and the uh, during the first year after the evacuation the residents of the hospitals and from the elderly nursing homes they had more than doubled the death rate uh, compared to the previous year indicating the effect of uh, stress uh, from the evacuation among these uh, residents. In addition, the prolonged evacuation of the whole city of uh, Fukushima and uh, uh, evacuation and uh, being placed in temporary shelters has led to a uh, tremendous amount of emotional stress to the residents and uh, has resulted in increased uh, depression, increased suicides and so on. So these deaths account for uh, probably a thousand or more deaths among the population. And uh, what have we gained by evacuating the residents? Well, we have probably gained some reduction in cancers, maybe 10, 20 years uh, from now, if you believe the LNT model is valid and they would have had increased cancer risk from the increased radiation dose if they were not evacuated. Uh, now, the LNT model, as I said, is questionable, so the benefit is questionable. But the deaths that happened from the related to the disaster because of the use of the LNT model, they are definitive and they have already happened. Uh, now, what's an alternative approach that we can use for this uh, situation or similar situations? Uh, as you probably know, uh, when you exercise, you reduce the risk of cancer by 20 or 30 percent. This has been seen in many studies. Uh, now, if we had allowed the residents to settle back into their homes after the initial evacuation and told them you are subjected to some additional uh, radiation and you are probably subject to some additional risk of cancer based on the LNT model. However, if you exercise regularly and we'll give you more facilities for it and we'll encourage you to do that. If we had done that, they would have had a 20% reduced cancer risk and the increased cancer risk from the LNT model would have been a few percent. So the net gain would have been like say 10 to 15 percent reduction in cancer risk and you would not have the all the stress and emotional trauma that the people have gone through because of the evacuation. Just imagine being displaced from your home for two years for no valid reason. You need to educate the public about the uh, uncertainties about the LNT model and then inform them about the benefits of the exercise in reducing cancer. So until you do a, you need to do a proper education of the public before you resettle them, otherwise there will be uh, emotional stress because of concerns about the low-dose radiation. So I think educating the public and then resettling them back in the homes, in their homes, would have reduced the emotional trauma and would have led to improved health compared to what they have now. Now, uh, the people who have supported the LNT model and the committees that have given this advice to evacuate the residents, they bear the full responsibility for the emotional trauma caused to the residents and to the deaths and for the deaths that were caused because of the evacuation. So they are answerable to these uh, deaths. Now the third question I want to address is the fear of radiation that is uh, there uh, even from low dose radiation uh, mainly because of the DNA damage that is caused by radiation that is uh, radiation causes DNA damage that is a known fact that's been well known for a long time. Uh, however, what we need to realize is the DNA damage 
is a very common occurrence in our body that it keeps happening all the time and happens more from normal activities that we do every day for example recently a publication has come out saying 5 minutes of strenuous exercise even 5 minutes of it uh, causes dna damage so they were expressing some concerns about it and saying that maybe we should use antioxidants to reduce the dna damage uh, of course you all know that the exercise is beneficial to your health and so this concern uh, the concern that was expressed from the 5 minutes of strenuous exercise is because of a misunderstanding of not including the effect of the adaptive response from our body to the damage that may be happening from the exercise uh, another activity that results in dna damage is brain activity that is learning activity uh, in the brain this has been studied in a mouse model and they have seen that the process of learning itself causes dna double strand breaks in the brain so this is a uh, hard to repair dna damage H- harder to repair dna damage and uh, these paper has also expressed concerns about the dna damage from such activities especially in the elderly and uh, have raised the question is this a cause of, is this a cause of concern now both of these causes of concern are because of not including the effect of adaptive response of our body to any such damage that happens uh, and we all know that regular exercise improves our health it does not harm our health and similarly regular brain exercise helps to maintain our mental health and as well as our health as we grow older and we would be less subject to diseases like alzheimers if we maintain regular brain activity for example playing bridge and so on this has been well documented uh, so not accounting for adaptive response has led to ridiculous conclusions about what we should do in relation to exercise and brain activity i would like to suggest not including adaptive response has led to equally unwise conclusions with respect to low dose radiation such as such as ct scans and i think including the adaptive response will lead to a more uh, logical approach to dealing with the radiation dose from ct scans and uh, the realization that it may not be harmful at all so um, the not accounting for adaptive response has led to the use of the lnt model and the concerns about the low dose radiation when you include the adaptive response that actually benefits our human health because all the defenses are elevated and that leads to reduced damage over a long period of time uh, therefore the low dose radiation is likely to have a cancer preventive effect which is called as radiation hormesis and uh, this was proposed more than 30 years ago by professor lucky uh, however uh in their wisdom the advisory committees decided to ignore uh, such uh, ideas and decided not to explore the possibility that the idea of radiation hormesis could be correct so we never did uh, human trials of radiation hormesis to see if they work or not the analysis of atomic bomb survivor cancer mortality data if you apply a correction for uh, the errors in the data analysis it indicates there may be evidence for radiation hormesis uh, also there were residents of apartments in taiwan who were exposed to low dose radiation because of contaminated steel that was used in the construction of their apartments when they followed their uh, health over the next uh, 15 20 years they found these residents had around 20% less cancers compared to equivalent residents of the city uh, so there is 
some evidence for the existence of radiation hormesis and not utilizing radiation hormesis for improving our health over the last 20 years may have led to a huge amount of preventable cancer deaths. There are also experimental studies with animal models which have shown the low dose radiation can lead to reduction in neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's that low dose radiation results in improved learning, improved uh, stem cell generation and so on. The concerns about the radiation, low dose radiation have prevented studies of such effects in humans. So they have pro the concerns have probably prevented advance in reducing some of these diseases including cancer. So I think it is time to look backwards and think about changing our direction to include the adaptive response in our considerations of the effects of low dose radiation. I think this will result in improved human health. At least it should be investigated to see if there is a validity or not for these ideas. Thank you.